Welcome back to this Computer Science 1 video series. In this module, we'll explore loop control structures. This module is broken up into six parts. In the first part, we'll introduce the motivation and basic terminology for loop control structures. Then we'll look at for loops and then while loops. For completeness, we'll touch on other loop control structures, but we won't cover them in depth. We'll conclude with a few of the most common pitfalls when writing loops and go over several exercises to get you started. This first part will be a simple introduction and motivation to loop control structures. The main motivation for loops is that we need a way to repeatedly execute a block of code. This comes up all the time when processing data in which you want to apply some operation over and over again to each piece of data. You can't simply cut and paste multiple versions of the same code block because you might not know how many pieces of data that you'll be dealing with when writing the program. Besides, this is a terrible way to code. Copy pasta of any sort inevitably leads to spaghetti code. Even when not processing data, you may still want to repeat some operation until some condition is satisfied. This is where a loop comes in handy. A loop allows you to repeatedly execute a block of code while some condition is still satisfied. In other words, while some Boolean expression or condition evaluates to true, the loop will continue to execute. Once the condition is no longer true, the loop terminates its execution and normal control flow continues. We refer to each loop execution as an iteration. There are several different types of loops that we'll cover shortly, but each type of loop has the same general components. These components include the initialization statement, a statement that indicates where the loop starts. A continuation condition, which is a Boolean statement that specifies whether or not the loop should continue its execution. If the condition evaluates to true, the loop will execute for at least one more iteration. If the condition evaluates to false, the loop will terminate. An iteration statement is intended to make progress towards this termination condition. If no progress is made towards the termination condition, the loop will continue on forever, resulting in what's called an infinite loop. Finally, whatever code we place in the loop body is the block of code that gets executed on each iteration of the loop. Sometimes the continuation condition may be referred to as the termination condition, which is simply just the negation of the continuation condition. Consider this extremely simple example, in which we want to print integers 1 through 10. The initialization condition is simply that we're setting up the variable i to have a value of 1. We want the loop to continue while i's value is less than or equal to 10. This gives us the continuation condition. The loop body will simply print out the value stored in i, which changes on each loop. To make progress towards the termination condition, we'll increment i by adding 1 to it on each iteration. We then jump back to step 2 and repeat this process until the continuation condition is no longer satisfied. Here's the basic idea illustrated as a control flow diagram. We start with the initialization statement. The continuation condition is evaluated at the start of each iteration. Since one is less than or equal to 10, we enter the loop, execute the body, perform the iteration, and loop back around to the start of the loop. This cycle forms a loop, which is why we call them loops. This loop will iterate 10 times before the continuation condition evaluates to false, breaking us out of the loop and executing the remainder of the program. We'll use this simple example to introduce the different types of loops next. 